Greetings, Salaam Alaikum, everyone. This is Shwa. I'm your host uh, for Light Up with Shwa. It's a weekly podcast on conscious living and parenting. Today, I have Dr. Amine Hoti. Yes, Dr. Amine. Assalamu Alaikum and welcome to Light Up with Shwa podcast. Assalamu Alaikum, Shwa. It's so lovely to be here with you. Thank you so much for your time. And though you say my time is precious, but your time is equally precious. Thank you. And I'm so grateful that you gave me your time and this opportunity to speak to you and to our audience and to learn from each other. Thank you. And just very briefly to introduce myself, as you asked. Yes. Um, really, I would say, if you say, who are you or what are you? I would say... Um, just stepping back, I would say that, yes, uh, I did my PhD at the University of Cambridge on Muslim women, which was published as a book called Sorrow and Joy among Muslim women. There's another book that I just recently did uh, called Gems and Jewels, and that's on the 10 faith communities of South Asia with a lot of pictures and stories and a diverse array of perspectives. Uh, I've also been a director in Cambridge on Abrahamic faiths uh, and brought some of those courses from Cambridge to South Asia and to teach them to young students. But if you really ask me, Shoa, who I am, I would say I'm uh, someone who is very keen to learn and who's very inspired by the world and knowledge um, and any little nuggets of history um, or pockets of knowledge really inspire me. And then, of course, my religion and my faith always emphasizes the concept of ilm. And that, again, is knowledge. Mm. Um, and my prophet, peace be upon him, said that um, edu <laughs> education is compulsory for every male and female, even if you have to go to the end of the world to uh, achieve it, go and get it. And so that uh, is something very important. And that is something that lights my heart. Mm. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay. So as we know that uh, the topic is fasting. So, well, let's start from here. Do you fast? Thank you, Shoa. That's a very good question. Yes, I do fast. Fasting is very difficult. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Islam and in many of the Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, many of the other faiths, there is some form of fasting. Oh. And uh, so I do fast during Ramadan. There mm -hmm. are also the fasts of Monday and Thursday, which are Sunnah fasts that the Prophet said to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not able to do them regularly yet. But it's something that I aspire towards. And mm -hmm. more recently, Shoa, uh, the idea of fasting has become very trendy. So if yes, you start Instagram, exactly. I will be coming on that. But yeah, you can start now if you want to mention yes. them. That's the appropriate <laughs> because I that's why I I was like, oh, the old age tradition is becoming a trend. Okay, yes, yeah. please go ahead. So now we can talk about it whenever you want. Oh no, that's fine. This is the time, and when it yes. comes uh, naturally, that's the time. Yeah. Yes. So uh, we see if you open up your Instagram or Facebook or any of these social media mm -hmm. bits, people all over the world, they're doctors who are not mm -hmm. necessarily Muslim. Yes. Uh, but they are saying, let's fast, let's meditate, let's splash water on our face and it brings down your temperature. <sighs> all these are forms of, you know, wazu, yep. fasting. All these have been told 1,400 years ago to people who had no idea because there was uh, not knowledge. The prophet mm -hmm. of Islam was not literate. So, you know, when uh, people say, oh, he uh, brought this down, he at that time may not have had the knowledge. But now so many years later, we're proving it scientifically. And people are saying, you know, you must do this. So. It's something, it's a wisdom that came from beloved God. And of course, he who created all of human beings knows them better. Yes, exactly. The body better <laughs> Logically. Than any scientist of all age. Yes. 
And so, of course, you know, when we uh, in today's age, there's also a debate between uh, religion versus uh, secularism yes. and um, the plus debate for the for the religionists would be that there's a lot of wisdom and that there's a lot of um, healing in uh, doing doing our traditions, for example, the prayers each each movement is again comparable to yoga today. Yes. You know, the idea of wazoo, like I mentioned, where you splash water on your face. And there's someone who came on Instagram, he's become very popular. And um, he says, you know, if you splash water, immediately your heart rate gets down. And it's just an amazing uh, thing for your body. And Muslims have been doing it for hundreds of years and generations of people. So similarly, fasting is something that is very detoxing, very healing for the mind, for the body, for the soul. But we're only now talking about it as a global civilization mm -hmm. and as all of humanity, which is great. It's oh. lovely and fantastic. Yeah. Fasting, um, Shoa, is very systematic. Oh. In the Islamic faith, fasting is very systematic. So it's for one month. Uh, of for a period called a month called Ramadan. Yes. And the first 10 days for the body uh, serves one function. The second 10 days serve another function. And the last 10 days, you know, totally purify the body. So oh. it's step by step, stage by stage. Oh. So if you do it like, you know, just one off day, it's not going to have any long term effect. Yeah. But if you are persistent and consistent with a habit, and therefore, similarly, it's Ramadan every year. And every year for a whole month, people have to fast. Yeah. And similarly, there are five times prayers that have been prescribed. And therefore, it's a habit. You see, it's a habit that breaks up the day uh -huh. and organizes your day. So it's it's although it's very traditional, it's very modern in a sense that it's helping us. It's like very present and current. And in today's world, we're talking, as I said, about fasting, intermittent fasting, about meditation, about yoga. But all these are included. And in fact, faith, having faith is so healing. Because I myself, who've uh, recovered from cancer and feel um, you know, I'm still in the rush of life. There's so much going on. I'm multitasking constantly. Oh. Just that moment of break when I can get onto my prayer mat and just submit to the beloved and ask him, uh, beloved Rabbi, for his support, for his love, for his embrace, for his beautiful names that we know of him, his 99 names. And each one is so beautiful. It's peace, salam. You know, there's Rahman, there's Rahim, there's Wadud, the beloved. Hmm. So there's so many beautiful healing words that in the rush of this life, Shoah, mm -hmm. this is, is like a balm. You know, you have, for example, for any disease of the body, you have maybe for cancer, you have chemotherapy. For a headache, you have an aspirin. But for your soul, the cure is just that moment's break, just sitting on the prayer mat grounded. And grounded is another key, uh, you know, very trendy concept <laughs> So being grounded. You sit on the floor, you sit on the prayer mat, you lower your head, your intellect to the beloved. Oh. Just imagine that act of humility. Yep, yep. Because human beings are so arrogant. You know, we uh -huh. have such a big ego. We say, oh. oh, we can do this. We can do that. True. If you just momentarily pause that's so powerful oh. let alone pause and then submit to the beloved and then not just submit but lower yourself True. you know then you're being humble so in each phase you're going to another level of another depth oh. and that's why spirituality Mm -hmm. can be so powerful because for your mental health and for your spiritual health, it's very healing. And for me, at least, I need that sense of calming, that sense of, because, you know, people could go to counselors, people could, 
uh, do all sorts of things. But like the body needs exercise, the body needs good food. It also needs this whole spiritual aspect, which is fasting, prayer, connecting with the poor, the needy, you know, reaching out, etc. True. Yes. So don't you think uh, fasting or fasting, depends on how we pronounce it, um, is also uh, making us conscious of how much we need from food point of view? Absolutely. So um, if you talk to a nutritionist, and I talked to my uh, aunt, who is a nutritionist in America, and I told her about you, Shua. Oh, nice. And, uh, <laughs> Maybe I should interview her if she's willing to. Fast. I actually did tell her that. So oh. please. So let me know. Yeah, sure. I will. Wonderful. I will. So uh, she said rightly that, you know, you have to have a balance of yeah. food. You've got to have your vegetables, your protein, all those things. So what we tend to do culturally mm -hmm. and what is needed religiously are two very different things. Mm. So culturally, for example, just recently I heard that in the Middle East when there's Ramzan, <laughs> Then uh, you have, for example, 600 dishes on the table and on the buffet. Uh -huh. Now, just think of that, which is I'm not in any way, um, uh, you know, demeaning any culture or anyone because I respect everybody. Yes. At the same time, there are people who are starving. There are people who are earthquake victims or yes. people in Turkey or Syria or even yeah. in Pakistan. Yes. Uh, who are even in India, there are people who are so poor and so arduous and needy uh -huh. that I ask this question to myself, you know, when my children finish food and leave a bit on their plate, uh -huh. I keep telling them they're people, we, we used to say this, people are starving in Africa. Uh -huh. So my little daughter would say, please pass them <laughs> this remainder food. <laughs> <laughs> And After I all, she's say, your daughter. She has brains, right? <laughs> I said that's a bit cheeky. Cute. <laughs> Cute. But I told her it would get, get stale by the time it gets there. <laughs> so my that's point nice. is, I know. <laughs> please save up, eat as much as needed. And True. yes, maybe have an extra, but don't be excessive, number one. Number two, yeah. in terms of what you eat, which you asked, don't go for sweets and mm -hmm. you know, those pakoras and samosas, <laughs> all the deep fried. Once in a while is okay, but not but, daily and, you know, going sure crazy for it. Yeah. You see, the <clears throat> problem is we all say once in a while. Okay. And we eat those every day, right? Yes, yeah, true. So that's got to be part of the table. That's part yeah. of the tra tradition. True, true. But if we go back to the original, and I am too, I would love to be that ideal, but which I'm not. Uh -huh. But, you know, these are things we're talking and discussing about the ideal versus the reality. Uh -huh. Is that Rasulullah, for example, on his table would have dates. Yes. And maybe a little bit of milk, uh -huh. you know, but there wouldn't be 600 dishes. Yes. yes. You know, or fountains of chocolate pouring and things like that. I so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a bit excessive. Extra vegans, excessive, so it's, yes. Number one, excessive. Keep that limited. Uh -huh. And number two... What you put on your plate is important. So nutrition, balance, you know. Quantity and, of it, you know, the quantity yeah. in the plate. Because my, uh, I, it's really, I don't want to be talking too much, but I want to say in addition to this, that when we go out even to the restaurants or to the weddings and all, you say lots of, uh, you see lots of wastage in yes. the plate as you said like uh, not a morsel or two but you know a lot of food is wasted so so isn't a, fa a fasting encouraging you to eat less use less you know and then keep that habit rest of the year don't you think absolutely well that's why you see it's instructed by no ordinary fellow human being it's instructed by beloved god so if as i said if he made us he made the nizam the mm -hmm. order or the cosmos <clears throat> yes aware of what will help us because as i said our own human greed wants more uh -huh. human greed wants it all you know there's that famous song i wanted all 
Oh. And I want it now. Oh. So this <laughs> concept of wanting, wanting, wanting yes, is countered and curtailed. It's held back and um, sort of harnessed oh. by the concept of fasting. Oh. So if you're fasting, you are going to abstain from certain things, food oh. and, you know, other uh, relationships and all the things that are your animalistic instinct hmm. to be drawn towards. Yep. So it's yep. it's a very big exercise. And I think that can lead you to wisdom because hmm. that wisdom of restraint is not hmm. easy for humans. True. But once you attain it, then it is beautiful. It takes you to a high level. It takes you to a level where you're empathetic about other human beings. Hmm. So you are worried about the ummah, you're worried about, uh, you know, people of all faiths, all communities, you're worried mm. about humanity, about the world. And that's where we want to get to. Mm. That ideal where we love all of human beings, because all of the prophets, all of the saints, were always inclusive of everybody, of mm. all of humanity. True. So fasting seems like is important to you. And does it do you find benefits for yourself? So let's uh, talk from our personal experiences. Um, what are the benefits for you? Well, um, you know, in some European countries, uh, sure, fasting is very short because you've got very short days. Mm -hmm. And so that can be such a sort of, it's like very morally boosting when you can um, sort of keep a fast for mm -hmm. such a short period. And before you know it, it's over. You've had your breakfast, which is suhoor, mm -hmm. and you have your dinner. All you do is skip lunch. Yeah. And so it's just a feeling that I achieved it. I can mm. do it. You know, that's mm. one thing. But number two, it detoxes your body. Mm. Number three, you're saving up because in this day and age, for example, yesterday on the radio, they said that a couple of um, stores uh, in the West will be rationing their food because there's no fresh tomatoes because of the cold weather. Mm -hmm. So each family is allowed only two packets of tomatoes and cucumbers, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And so fasting helps you to rethink about food. Mm -hmm. It's not just that endless supply that mm -hmm. we get. True. It's about um, thinking, hey, look, where did this food come from? Who planted it? How did it come to my plate? Mm. Uh, should I be grateful? Should I not be grateful? Should I be thanking the and blessing the hands that made it and the mm. beloved who sent it? You know, should I be in a, in a state of humility? So there's so many things mm. to think about when you're fasting. It's not just on one level. True. It's on many, many levels. So it serves you at many, many levels that you have experienced over the years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for me, I remember when I was small, I would find fasting very difficult. True. And so my mom well, had a very good sense of humor <laughs> and she was very good. And so she said to me, she said, OK, you fast twice a day. You're you're even better than the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's smart. That's you a good way. <laughs> from breakfast to lunch. That's one fast. And then from lunch to dinner. So everybody <laughs> else is doing one fast, but you do two. And that's when I was very little. Okay, that's how little? Yeah. If my if you five, five, six, seven. Oh, that's five. too little. Yeah, that's yeah. Then what, because everybody's doing. You want to join in, right? You, know? you want to be part of the community. Mm. But then once you grow up and you want to do a full fast, <laughs> but now you know the trick. <laughs> uh, no, so thank you for those perspectives that you have given. Um, what do you think, uh, would you recommend people to try it out who are not from the tradition of Islam uh, or uh, any recommendations about fasting? Is there a special way that you have experienced that it can be, you know, easier to begin with? Yes. So, um, of course, you know, it's, as I said, uh, Shua, and as you said, it's become very trendy. Uh -huh. So just trying a fast with one of your fellow friends or your Muslim friend or, I mean, there's so many Muslims living in the West and East nowadays. True. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also uh, Jewish communities. There's also Christians and it's Lent at the moment too. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
all of them have a form of fasting. Mm -hmm. And if one were to participate, then uh, it's always nice because you step into someone else's shoes, you find out how they do it, why they do it, what's the benefit. And it's not easy. So you asked another question, Shoa. You said, uh, do you look forward to it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fasting? And I would say that there's an excitement around Ramadan because you uh, your family comes together. It's like a challenge. You have to wake up early in the morning, which I do anyway. I get up very early. I get up around four-ish. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's just before Fajr. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to wake up. But here, all your family is waking up. Oh. And you have some nice foods together. Do you so, make paratas? Uh, well, as I was talking, sure, I was actually thinking of a paratha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if we were close by, I would have made paratha for you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, do Sorry, parcel it, sure. <laughs> <laughs> like my daughter said, do parcel the paratha. Inshallah. Inshallah. God so, uh, you know, it's it's excitement to be with a family. And then breaking fast, mm. even more exciting. That is exciting. You yes. see, you've done, it's like a marathon. You've yes. run. You've done the run. Your body's been through difficulty. You've abstained. You've been, you've tried to do good stuff during the day. And you're mm. there at the end. Mm. And so what do you do at that point? You break your fast with delicious foods with lovely company with mm. home with family so it's like a warm yeah. wonderful feeling but yeah. at the same time ramadan i'm sure in many hearts would also bring a tiny bit of thought am i doing it right you know what should i be doing that i'm not doing mm. uh, am i doing enough mm. And all these questions that a mu'min should ask, you know, the, a person of love or love of humanity, love of faith, should ask what the questions of yourself. Mm. But that could make you a little bit fearful or tread carefully. Mm. Mm. And I think that is an important aspect too.